Hello, how's it going? So full confession, today is not really going to be a tutorial. It's more going to be a code walkthrough. And that's unfortunate. But the reason for that is that this final stretch of getting the final triangle up on the screen, there's a lot of things that we need to balance together. And it's not satisfying if I just do a few of those things per video. And it takes way too long if I do all of them in one video. So I'm just giving an overview. But what is very cool is I'm going to be discussing dynamic rendering. Which, uh, yeah. So um, from the top, here I've got my main function. Now you may re remember that my main function basically starts off a thread, which is going to be doing the rendering. And that thread sort of runs on an infinite loop until it gets a signal to stop. As a matter of fact, we can give this a go right now. Fingers crossed. There we go. So as we can see, we've got our triangle and this is sort of waiting on an infinite loop. Now we are getting a bunch of validation errors and that's on purpose because I wanted to simply get the triangle up and I'll show you why we're getting those errors in a second and how we can fix it. But anyway, we can close it. There we are. Okay, so it's running on an infinite loop. Now, what is it doing? Well, if we go into our engine, it's a little hard to see, isn't it? But anyway, we go through all of our stuff. We make all these objects, which we've been making in the past few videos. And then we get up here. Oh, by the way, quick note, I should probably talk about this. When it comes to creating the logical device, now because I want to use the dynamic rendering extension, there's a little bit more involved. So to start with, down below, you can see that I've got this dynamic rendering extension name. So I'm requesting that explicitly and also I need to, just the same as the shaders, I need to create this struct object thing to indicate that we are going to be using dynamic rendering. That's our physical device dynamic rendering features. That's a mouthful. But we make that, we give it a flag to say, yep, we want dynamic rendering. And then because shader features is being passed in as P next for the device creation info, I chain this up. So I set dynamic features as the, the next pointer after shader features. So it's sort of like a linked list of features and go through and enable them. But anyway, back to the main stuff. So we go in here and I've got, that should not be there. That makes things significantly simpler. But anyway, so we go ahead and we create what's called a command pool. Now, a command pool is like a memory pool allocator object. It stores the memory for um, a bunch of objects. So we make this command pool and then we can sort of allocate command buffers from a command pool. Now, all this code for the command pool creation and buffer allocation is in here, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, just a brief overview today, because there is a lot to get through. The only thing I'll mention is that in the flags, I'm also putting in the reset command buffer flag, which allows me to reset and reuse a command buffer. Not that I'm doing that at the moment. My rendering is pretty simple, but that is there. Anyway, so we've got these command buffers and we're going to have a single command buffer for every frame because I'm treating a frame as like a little little snapshot of state for the renderer, basically. So I give it a command buffer and then I'll look down here at how I'm using the command buffers. So this is a really simplified version of the standard Vulkan drawing system that you've probably seen in a lot of examples and tutorials. What I'm doing here is instead of fetching an image index from the swap chain, I have just hard coded that 
So I'm always dealing with image zero, the first image of the top chain. So I go ahead and when I set the command buffer up above, all the drawing commands were recorded. So they're all good to go. So we have two operations. We have sort of the graphics work and then we have the presentation work. And these are two individual operations. And I don't want to worry about synchronization just yet. So what I'll do to get around that is I will force the queue to idle in between these operations. So these drawing commands that I've recorded do all of the work to take an image and draw stuff onto it. And then I just let the queue run completely through because I'm, I'm going to deal with this in the, in the next video. And then again, I take image zero because I have a guarantee that that image is completely written to and ready to go. And then I present it to the screen. And then again, I wait for the graphics queue to idle so that I know that image zero will be good to go again. So this is just a band-aid to get the thing working in the first place. Okay, so on to how the frame sort of handles all this info. See, I'm passing in a lot of stuff. First up, I'm passing in the command buffer that I want the frame to record to. But in addition to that, I'm passing in the vector of shader objects that I made in the previous video, because I want the frame to know about that. And I'm also passing in basically the size of the window that I'm rendering to and this dynamic loader object. And that's important. Okay, so onto the frame. So the frame has pretty much the same stuff as before. Of course, you know, we've got to have this prototype for the function. In addition to this, we've got a few things. We've got this rendering info struct because we're doing dynamic rendering. And so we need some sort of description of the rendering that we're going to do. You'll see what this is in a second. And in addition to that, we've also got this color attachment. And these things we can dynamically like record them on the fly. Or if we know that nothing's going to change, we can sort of just record them once at a fixed event and then repeatedly reuse them. Now, Annoying boilerplate that dynamic rendering was meant to spare us. So, dynamic rendering means that we can swap out configurations on the fly. We can say, hey, I'm going to start rendering and then suddenly change our blend mode or change our depth test or change all sorts of things. And then the guarantee or the magic of dynamic rendering is that we don't need to have created a bunch of pipelines for each of those different configurations. We can set up the one configuration, we can change the configuration in between draw calls, all that stuff. That's great. Complication. We still need to declare everything. And so this is another one of those classic Vulkan patterns where the, there's no easy mode. So the first time you do it, it's a lot of work. For repeated alterations, it gets much easier. It gets a little easier, but that initial work still needs to be there. So let me sort of start talking through this. Okay, so I'll leave this. There we are. All right, so set command buffer. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to save, basically save that command buffer. So now this is the command buffer that this frame is going to be using for everything. Then we go ahead and we build these things, the color attachment and the rendering info. Now, these are just a little bit of, you know, boilerplate. Really, we're just saying pretty much what you would expect in any renderer. We're setting, you know, that when we load up the color attachment ready to go, we clear it with this color down below. When we're done with the color attachment, we retain that contents. Pretty standard stuff. But, you know, because it's Vulkan, that does need to be explicitly specified somewhere. And then the rendering info is pretty straightforward. It's just stating basically which attachments we're rendering to. There are, you know, we can have multiple attachments. We can have 
a depth attachment, stencil, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so far so good. And then we begin recording commands on our command buffer. And usually this wouldn't be an issue, this image layout transition stuff, because if we use render passes, render passes have implicit layout transitions involved. But when we go to dynamic rendering, we have to specify those layout transitions manually. So at a future point, I will look in depth at layout transitions, but the brief summary is that we start off with an image, which we honestly don't know its layout. It could be the same as before. It doesn't even matter. But we want to get that into an attachment optimal layout. Otherwise, honestly, I think it doesn't make a big difference, but you know, the reality is validation layers will scream at us if we don't do this. So, okay, we'll play ball. Um, and then we have this uh, access flag and then this pipeline stage. So the access flag is the sort of specific operation at which to pause and do the transition. And then the pipeline stage is, well, it's the pipeline stage, which is a coarser description. So we sort of get to this operation within this stage, and then we do the transition. But again, I'll be talking about this in depth in a future video. As well as, side note, somebody said, could I do a video on how to compile GLSL to SpearV within the program, not with an external tool. And I think that's an excellent idea. I just need to find the time for it. I'm about to go overseas and then I won't have much time for Vulcan stuff. But anyway, right. So it's time to, it's time to get to it. So the big idea of dynamic rendering is that, see, here we go, begin rendering. And then validation layers will say, okay, before you begin rendering it's basically begin entering rendering that's the dynamic rendering section but validation layers will say okay before you start rendering you need to specify the configuration of your pipeline or your rendering configuration basically so if we go in here and we look at this stuff if you've done any work with building pipelines in vulcan you'll see that this pretty much looks very similar to the work that was done in building a pipeline. The difference is these things are all recorded on a command buffer. So think of it as your command buffer begins with like a header of like all your intended pipeline configuration, then the drawing commands, and then along the way we can swap out that configuration. But otherwise, this is pretty much what it is. Now, this dispatch loader dynamic is important because, again, this dynamic rendering is an extension and it's a device extension, which means that, just thinking, is it a device extension? I think it might be, well, it's a device extension, but confusingly we use um, get pro, uh, <laughs> instance get procedure address. But anyway, the point is, if we were doing this in the C header, we would need to um, call instance get procedure address, and then cast that to a pointer function before calling these functions. Luckily, you know, we're in the HPP header, so we can just sort of pass in this dynamic loader. But that dynamic loader does need to be passed in. Otherwise, Vulkan won't be able to um, load these functions properly. But I think that's fine. So just think of it as all this stuff is configuring the pipeline, except we can't call it a pipeline. And then here we get to the, the actual drawing stuff. So we go, all right, begin rendering. And that uses all the configuration that we set up before. And then we bind the shaders. So in order to do that, 
we need to specify the stage that each of these shaders is going to be bound to. And then we get, you know, the set of shader objects. And again, we need dynamic loader because shader objects are an extension. So that's it. Cool. Then we just issue a draw command to draw three points, one instance, just like that. And then again, I need to add another image layout transition because I've gone from, well, I want to be able to present it to the screen and I've just transitioned, transitioned it into attachment optimal. So I just need to handle that. Okay. By the way, these image layout transitions are in the image file. Um, it's pretty much, I copy post, copy pasted from my old tutorials. It's, it's pretty much the standard image transition stuff, which I'll talk about at a later point. But again, it's a late night here. There we go. Cool. We've got the triangle. It's all good. It's all working. Like I said, these validation errors are screaming at us. All they're really saying is that you're saying, hey, um, you've got the image index of zero, but you didn't get that from the swap chain. And it says, hey, you need to get it from the swap chain. Um, this stuff about the layout must be in image present source. We've already got that. We've guaranteed that. The only reason it's complaining is because I'm just ham fisting it at the moment because I want to keep the synchronization out of this. I want to sit down and have time to do proper like synchronization too. But anyway, I'm rambling. So that's probably a good sign to stop it for now. Okay, so thank you for being here with me when we got our Vulcan triangle up on the screen. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope this has sort of explained dynamic rendering a little bit because I know that's a pretty new feature. Anyway, all the best and I will see you again soon. Bye.